Thank you, Pauline. Let's put on my glasses so I can actually see my notes and I'll talk to you about it. Welcome to you all coming. Sorry. Stand here closer to the left. Thanks, Roger. I'd just like to extend a, a warm welcome to you all coming here. This is the first of two workshops we're going to hold around the country. And um, from to date, the, uh, the numbers of people that are turning up to this and these workshops is very encouraging. Uh, we've got a very good group of people here today. And we've got actually uh, oversubscribed to our hall in Hamilton. We we're going to have the next workshop in about two weeks' time. But firstly, I'd like to welcome you all and also give thanks to the local branch of the National Beekeepers Association for the help that they've given in making this workshop possible. It's a, it's a workshop on raw sensitive hygiene, the work that's been done in the past on this. The Varroa Sensitive Hygiene Program was the brainchild of plant and food research in conjunction with the NBA Research Committee. And this was about eight years ago. People that were involved, people like Jane Lorimer, John Berry, Graham Kamel, Cameron Martin, and many others. It was able to get going and grow legs through help and funding from the Sustainable Farming Fund. And I have to give due acknowledge to, to acknowledgement to the Sustainable Farming <coughs> Fund today, and I'll do so for all the others in a minute. Um, the NBA managed to get Zespri on board, and also the avocado industries to provide funding for the, the basic research, the money that made this day happen, made this research happen. <laughs> we can lay claim, I mean the NBA, to this achievement happening. Uh, we are very proud of it, and we're very proud to now bring you today the results of that research, the extension that is necessary from the research to talk to you today about it, to have that discussion, to get your feedback on it, and also look at where we go from here. So I'd like to give due acknowledgement to the Sustainable Farming Fund, and Paul Bolger will be talking about that, on behalf of the Sustainable Farming Fund. The Honey Industry Trust, I'm not sure if uh, <coughs> that is represented here today, is Alan here? No, he does. Anyway, we can lay, say that the Honey Industry Trust did put money into this program. Convita New Zealand, they put money into this program. And of course, Zespri, the Avocado Industry Council, and of course, many beekeepers. For our resistance, it is happening. There's no doubt about it, it's unequivocal. What do others think about for our resistance? People outside our industry. Back in March, in late March, I spent a day in Wellington with uh, Pauline and Daniel, and we visited various politicians, various industry leaders. And it was really this Varroa resistance was one of the four, foremost questions in what we ended up our discussions with them. I met with the Honourable David Carter, <coughs> Minister of Primary Industries, and I, I talked to him about Varroa resistance. His reply initially was that it's an industry problem. You guys, it's an industry problem. It's your problem. Uh, well, I didn't accept that, and nor did, uh, I think eventually he did not either. You know, the reason pollination. He said there's no consensus in the industry about the seriousness of varroa resistance. That's really partly why we're here today. We need to have this discussion about it. Because, because otherwise we could well be on track to colony collapse disorder. Precursors are there, not all of them, but Varara is certainly a great vector of that. The industry needs to sort out its structure. The problem with Varara resistance and other things like market access is a universal problem. It'll affect all of us, no matter where we align ourselves. So in order to tackle these sorts of problems, we need a universal, universality of approach. I also saw uh, uh, Damien, Damien O'Connor, the, O'Connor, the agricultural spokesperson for the Labour Party. And one of his comments was that 
The lack of pollination is not high on other sectors' radars. We need to socialise this issue. In other words, the greater part of the agricultural economy, while they recognise pollination is necessary and absolutely critical, many of them don't see the problem of rural resistance. Kiwi Fruit Industry, of course, is going through the throes of the PSA problem, how they're tackling that. And they are doing it, and they will get through it. I'd like to just broaden this out a bit further because our speakers will, today will be talking about their one individual, or sorry, their own individual um, programs, their, their research, and um, Pauline has introduced them before, Dr. Mark Goodwin, Michelle Taylor, Franz Lars, and Peter Sales will talk to the bees. Of course, Philip Crop and Ray Butler here today will talk on their program. John Hartman will talk on um, the Product Standards Council. And of course, Paul Bolger will talk on the MPI. But really what I want to broaden this question out is, give you, the, give you a question. Is science the answer to our problems? Is it, is it, the, is it the answer? <coughs> if you only look back in history, it has provided some quite spectacular answers. Really, the country was built on a lot of scientific research, and probably the best example I could think of off the top of my head was with the advent of refrigeration in the 1880s. It enabled New Zealand to export frozen meat for the first time, and it actually gave a lift to the economy of something like 30% of its gross domestic profit product. Looking at science being an answer, it may not be the full answer to Varroa, Science, the people, the panel today will talk about some of those things. But I, you know, I'm a bit of a fan of the late Sir Paul Callaghan. And he was a visionary. He, uh, he saw the centrality of science to progress. And it's something that I think too. He saw it lifting our horizons as a country. And I can see it actually doing the same with that beekeeping industry. One of the things I was involved with went to just the beginning of June was some of the forums around the transit of Venus um, celebrations in Gisborne and in Tolaga Bay. Uh, this was uh, celebrating uh, Cook's um, voyage and, and the, uh, the scientific work around the, the following the transit of Venus that ultimately determined the distance of the world to, to the Sun various observations around the world at the same time. I went to a panel discussion that was hosted by Kim Hill and it included um, Sir Peter Gluckman who was the Chief Science Advisor to the Prime Minister. It also included uh, Derek Handley. He was the 2010 Business Leader of the Year and he was the co-founder of the Hyper Factory. He's since gone on to, to, to bigger and greater things. He's actually been an advisor to um, President Obama. Uh, Pro Professor Sean Hendy, he was a de deputy, or is the deputy director of the McDiamond Institute. This is an institute that deals with material science and things like na nanotechnology. The panel also included Dr. Caroline Saunders. She was uh, an economist of the year in 2000 and year, 2007 and she's been made an officer of New Zealand Order of Merit in 2009. So this mix of panel of scientists and an economist, facilitated by Kim Hill, approached the subject as science, the answer to some of our problems. And I could talk quite at length about that, but I'd just like to read what the panel has one agreed on. And they said, we are good at knocking ourselves. We need a better conversation between science and the community and the humanities. This will help lift our prosperity that our economy needs. Now I could very well read that, that sentence again and say, we're very good at knocking ourselves as an industry, as beekeepers. We need a better conversation between science and the beekeeping community and humanities. And this will help bring the prosperity our beekeeping industry needs.
just going on from that, we are a hundred million dollar industry, at the very least, in exports. If we put at least even one percent of that, one million dollars, into scientific research, what could we do for that, with that? What, how, how would it progress our industry? We need a strategic approach to that. And part of that is, and I'm trained, I'm talking to John Hartman about that already, but we need to have a conversation about that. And this forum today gives us a start to that, can well do that. We have some people there that we can talk through that, that sort of thing, as a very base beginning. So really, that is sort of the start, the, all I need to talk to you about at the moment. Um, I'd like to introduce Mark Goodwin, first speaker. <coughs> and we can have a discussion after this speech, a brief discussion, questions. Before I go, I'd just like to say that yeah, this forum would not have happened without the National Bank Teams Association and uh, the subscriptions that pay for it. Uh, we have put a brochure on each seat, so we do need your support in order to do the sorts of things that we propose to do. So thank you, Mark. Thank you.